In this episode, the boat cradle is finished and we prepare for lofting. Hi, I'm Bill England of the Ambler Odyssey's YouTube channel. I'm building a George Beeler designed 48 foot wooden troller yacht here in the sea clamp boat shed in the backyard of my Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Canada home. When completed, we will sail the seven seas in search of adventure. With the boat shed finished, there are a number of projects to tackle. may remember that we started the boat cradle before the boat shed was even finished. But now with the boat shed covered, we had to finish the cradle. The cradle upon which this 48 foot, 30 ton wooden boat will be built must be sturdy, as it will bear the weight for over the next four years of building. I lucked out in finding 6x6 and 6x8 timbers in very good condition at the Charlottetown City Auction. I also acquired one creosote slab measuring 8 inches by 18 inches by 6 feet, which I am cutting down here to produce three cradle cross pieces. First, the cut lines were measured and chalk line snapped. It was quite the process to cut this slab with a standard circular saw. The first cut was at a shallow blade depth as cutting at full depth would be too much work for the motor. As I had stored the slab outside during the winter, this made cutting through its frozen thickness even more difficult. With one full cut completed, the slab was flipped over and the cut process repeated.
cuts with the circular saw did not reach the middle of the slab. So out came the steel chainsaw to cut through the middle, using the cut lines as a guide. Now that all the cross pieces were cut and their locations on the cradle marked, they were secured into position with 12 inch spikes. With the last spike driven, the boat cradle was finished. With the cradle now finished, the lofting table could be built on top of it. Lofting is essentially marking out the full length of the boat to produce a two-dimensional representation of its lines. The next episode will explain the lofting process in much greater detail. With a 48 foot length overall, this required five sheets of OSB or oriented strand board to be laid lengthwise over the cradle and screwed to the cross piece. How many ways can a 4x8 sheet be carried effectively by one person? Well, here are five not so effective ways I found. Luckily, other than the framing table, I won't have to worry about it again for a few years when a first layer of hull planking will be covered by two layers of half inch plywood before the hull is fiberglass.
the lofting table finished, it is covered with two layers of 36 inch wide crafting paper. The lines will be transferred from the plans onto the paper. Next, a wooden pattern or template will be laid out in the shape of the keel. Finally, the lines and marks from the paper will be transferred onto the wooden pattern. The first step in the lofting process is to draw lines every two feet along the length of the table. These lines are called stations and will indicate where the boat frames are to be positioned. The frame spacing is an important structural component and varies depending on the boat type and size. The wings can be drawn here on Prince Edward Island and snow hitting the plastic can be like loud static. When the wind hits the forward end wall full on it can be a little shaky, but the gothic arch greenhouse style boat shed held firm. In the next episode the hull lines are pulled from the table of offsets. We spring a batten, mark the rabbit, and trace a fair curve. All boat builds speak for drawing a 2D plan of the hull. For a front row seat on this do-it-yourself boat build project, please like and subscribe to the Ambler Odysseys on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.